Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're gonna talk about trying to find when piecewise functions would be continuous and differentiable, particularly at the point where we go from one piece to another on our piecewise function. So for this one here, you can see I have this sort of parabola looking shape that leads to an open hole, and then I have this linear piece that leads to a closed dot. So the idea here is obviously since I'm going to this point here and then I jump up here and continue, this is not continuous at x equals zero on the y-axis. Because it's not continuous, remember when something is not continuous, it's also not differentiable. So this is neither continuous at x equals zero, nor is it differentiable at x equals zero. You can imagine if I were to take this linear piece, let's say, and slide it downward vertically so that this closed dot fit inside this open hole, then we would have a picture that looks like this, and now this would be continuous at x equals zero, right? We do still sort of have a little bit of a sharp corner there, right? But it is connected. There's no break in the graph anymore at x equals zero. So this value in the piecewise function where we go from one function to the other, we want the y values to be the same. Let's look at an example. Here we have a piecewise function. One piece is x squared plus ax. That's when x is less than or equal to three. We also have a piece that is 4x minus 6. That's when x is greater than 3. We want to figure out what value for a, so this is some number a times x in this term here, what value of a makes this continuous at x equals 3, Okay, where we go from one rule to the other. You can tell that happens at x equals 3 just by looking at it. So we need these to have the same y value at x equals 3. So think about what we get when we plug in x equals 3 to each of these, because that's what I'm interested in. I want to see how can they be the same. So if I plug in 3 for the top piece of the function, that would give me 3 squared plus a times 3, right? In other words, I would get 9 plus 3a at x equals 3 from my formula here. Okay, let's look at the second piece, 4x minus 6. What will that be when x is 3? So we would have 4 times 3 minus 6. This would be 12 minus 6, which would be just plain 6, right? So I need these expressions, 9 plus 3a and 6, to be the same. And if they're the same, then we'll have the same y value at x equals 3, right? They'll connect to one another. So let's go ahead and set these equal to each other. So 9 plus 3a must be the same as 6, equal to 6. Uh, let's go ahead and subtract 9 both sides. So minus 9 would give us then that 3a is equal to negative 3. And if we divide by 3, I think, right, we can see that a would have to be negative 1 for this function to be continuous at x equals 3. So that's how we can tell or make sure that piecewise functions are continuous at some x value, making sure that the boundary value that goes from one piece to the other, the y values are the same. But just because something is continuous, if we look back at this picture that we had before, it doesn't mean it's differentiable, right? So the question is, this is not really differentiable at x equals zero. It is continuous, there's no break in the graph. But the slope coming in here, to the origin changes all of a sudden as soon as I pass the origin to some other value. If you think about zooming in at the origin itself, right, my slope here is pretty flat as I come in. Looks like it's maybe even a slope of zero as I come into the origin on this one piece. But then as I'm coming in to the origin on the other piece, it turns out that that slope is actually, it looks like maybe positive one, right? So we want the slopes to kind of come in and we want this basically to be not just connected but also smooth at this point. This is connected at this point, but it's not smooth. There's a little bit of a corner on there. So how would we get rid of the corner? Well, we would need basically our parabola to sort of at some point on the parabola swoop in so that the slope on the parabola was the same when it connected to this line. In other words, if I sort of scoot the parabola over and down a bit, and we get sort of a nice, if we zoom in, a nice connected thing where you can't really tell that we're moving from one graph to the other. So not only do we need to be connected, which means we need to have the same y value in order to be continuous where these meet up, but we also need to have the same slope. So same y value and same slope on both pieces will make the piecewise function differentiable. 
Let's look at an example of that. So we have 3x squared plus 4x is a piece. That is when x is less than or equal to 1. And we have 2x cubed plus ax plus b. So we have two constants in here now. And that's when x is on the other side of 1, when x is greater than 1. We want to find the values for a and for b that make this both continuous and differentiable at x equals 1, right? So continuous means we need the y value to be the same. And then differentiable means at this x value we also need the derivative to be the same value. So we'll say we want to focus over here on making the piecewise function continuous at x equals 1. So if we do that, then we'll just plug in 1 into each of these formulas and see what would happen to make those the same. So if I plug in 1 into the first one, I would get 3 times 1 squared plus 4 times 1. And I want that to be equal to plugging in 1 to the second one, right? So that would equal 2 times 1 cubed plus a times 1 plus b. So if I plug in 1 everywhere, here I get 3 times 1, which is 3, and then 4 times 1 is 4. Over here I get 2 times 1, which is 2, plus a times 1 would be a, and then just b here. So I get 7 is equal to 2 plus a plus b. And let me just get my maybe my constants, my a and b on one side only. So if I subtract 2 on both sides, I would get that 5 is equal to a plus b. Okay, so I don't have enough information to solve because I still have two things I don't know and I only have one equation. So I can't solve a and b here. But what we do know is the derivatives need to be the same at x equals 1. So that means we should have another equation we can find by figuring out what f prime of x is. Right, so what is f prime of x for this one? Well, let's look at f prime here, right? We're gonna have different derivatives for each piece. So the formula for the derivative here, power rule, the two comes out, multiplies the three. We'll get six x, the power goes down by one. Here, this is four x to the one. So one comes out and multiplies and the power goes down by one, giving us no x's. Now here, this one, if we take the derivative of this one, f prime of x there. The 3 will come out for the power rule. We'll get a 6 there. The power goes down by 1. So actually here I get a 6x squared. And this one here I have an x to the 1 also. 1 comes out, multiplies the a. That just stays a. And then the power going down by 1 here. The x drops off. b is just a constant. So the derivative of this would be 0. So we won't have anything else to add there. Now we want these to be the same at x equals 1, and that will give us that the function is also differentiable, right? So doing the differentiable part, plugging in x equals 1 to both of these things here. So we would get 6 times 1 plus 4 is equal to 6 times 1 squared plus a, right? I don't have any b left once I did the derivative here. So here I'll get 6 plus 4, that would be 10, is equal to 6 times 1, which would be 6 plus a. Now I think we can tell here that I can actually solve this one for a. If I subtract 6 from both sides, then that tells me that a is equal to 4, right? So I know that a is equal to 4. And now if we look over here, knowing that a needs to be 4, that tells us here that 5 is equal to 4 plus b, right? And so if 5 is equal to 4 plus b, and we subtract 4 from both sides, I think we know that b needs to be 1 here. So because we had two equations for the two numbers we were trying to find, we were able to do it. Okay, so when a is 4 and b is 1, in other words, when this piece, the formula for it is 2x cubed, plus 4x plus 1, then these will have the same y value and the same slope at x equals 1. Okay, hopefully this helps you with your continuous and differentiable piecewise examples. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.